from the surveys, the three practices that stood out were embodiment, awareness, and inquiry. Embodiment and awareness were the two practices that you all, in general, said you wanted to explore more. The other practices you felt experienced enough in or you explored them quite a bit. Inquiry was the one practice where most people said they didn't really know much about it. So we're gonna explore all three and I'm really excited about that. These are probably my three favorite practices. If I have go-tos, they're embodiment, awareness, and inquiry. But my experience is that all the ways of meditating lead back into the other ways of meditating if you take them deep enough. That's maybe not 100% true, but that's been my experience. And we boiled really quickly, we boiled these practices down to one theme, and that is unpacking presence. And this is going to be, I love exploring presence. It's perhaps my favorite topic. It's also one that's really interesting to talk about. It's much more about direct experience with presence. And what I think you find in doing embodiment and awareness in particular is the experience of presence. And this is why presence kind of emerged as a topic here. So unpacking presence, let's start that. That's what we're going to do right now in, in today's practice. So First, I just want to ask, what is presence? So sit here for a minute with that question. And notice what comes up. You may have nothing come up. You may have an answer. You may have doubt. And then you ask it again, what is presence? I like starting with this question and I really would invite you all to sit with this question, regardless of whatever I'm going to say today, keep asking the question, keep listening for what arises. And when we ask the question, I, I do think it often will bring up our ideas and expectations about presence. But my experience is the, the trick here is that presence isn't constructed. It isn't, we don't put together pieces and then poof, there's presence. We're entering into presence consciously. We're revealing presence. We're letting it be part of our conscious experience, but presence is already here. Everything that's happening now is arising in presence. Everything we do in practice, happening in presence. Every thought we have, every feeling we have, everything we perceive, is happening in presence. There's just a difference of whether we are consciously present. You know, it's funny with these, these terms when we get into this subject, you know, linguistically it gets really funny. Um, when we're present in presence, you know, then we recognize what I'm talking about here. And I'll, I'm so tempted to just keep, tell, keep hinting at this and I want to point you back to your own experience. That's what I prefer rather than feeling you with a bunch of ideas, but sometimes the way that certain teachers have posed or expressed what presence is can be really helpful in entering our uh, entering into our own experience directly, a sort of pointing out. So I'm going to read one. You might have seen this shared by Vince in the Mighty Networks, but it is a very good summary of uh, the experience of presence. This is from A. H. Almas. Presence gives a sense of immediacy, of fullness, of hereness in the experience. It gives a sense of immediacy and directness that suffuses the experience, that pervades it and fills it, so that our awareness, our consciousness, is not only observing it from a removed place, but also from within it. It is as though our nerve endings were inside the experience, outside the experience, and in between. They are everywhere and feeling the experience in all its possibilities. That's when we really know the experience fully and completely. If we have that kind of awareness, then we recognize that to be aware of something is not just a function and it is not just a capacity. The awareness, in fact, is our essential presence, our hereness, our substantiality. Honestly, we could just be done with this talk. <laughs> 
and you could sit with all of that and unpack presence blind by line. What does this word and line and phrase mean in my experience? We, we start with the mind, the intellect, we enter into contemplation of what is said, and then we try to go to direct experience. What is this pointing to? But already you see it, nothing is left out. There's nothing left out. This is the outside, inside, and in between. So what's left? There's nothing left. Nothing's left out of presence. And so in practice, it's interesting. We're going to be doing a lot of practice um, in this training. But I think if we start with a, a more helpful view about presence, it'll be more fruitful in our practice. So, and part of that view is understanding that if presence means including everything, not leaving anything out, then we, like, we don't have to construct anything. We're not bringing, again, presence into existence. For me, it's more about letting go and dissolving these uh, barriers and limitations to that experience of fullness, recognizing ways in which we limit or contract our, our, our fullness, our just being here-ness. Another quote, which this next quote starts pointing to how we might practice in presence. The first thing I read with Almas is very, I mean, it's essentially pointing out instructions. So if a phrase or a sentence in there just does it for you and it cuts right to it and you can just drop into presence, you just hang out there. Th that would be the practice. But if that's difficult, we can start working with instructions. So this is from Ajahn Chah. Do not try to become anything. Do not tr make yourself into anything. Do not be a meditator. Do not become enlightened. When you sit, let it be. When you walk, let it be. Grasp at nothing, resist nothing. Okay, so again, very interesting instructions here. There is, th these are instructions, but they're instructions to say, stop trying to finagle or uh, conjure up presence. Let it be. And further practice can be noticing ways in which we are doing that, where when we sit in presence, that this isn't it. This isn't presence. Presence is somewhere in the distance. So what do I need to do right now? Huh? So there's a doing, an effort, a planning, uh, a mapping out of how I get to presence versus a letting go. Like, oh, I recognize that. There's the plan. I'm going to drop it. Let it go. So again, to double down on this, there's no flavor of experience that is antithetical to presence. Any, any thought, regardless of the flavor, any experience, any phenomena, it's not, it's happening in presence. This is important. So uh, one other uh, instruction passage, this is from mm, Verses on Faith Mind. To live in the great way is neither easy nor difficult, but those with limited views are fearful and resolute. The faster they hurry, the slower they go and clinging cannot be limited. Even to be attached to the idea of enlightenment is to go astray. Just let things be in their own way, and there will be neither coming nor going. Okay, so then the question is, like, why the hell are we going to practice? You know, if, if we take a radical approach to this, there, it often is the instructions are like, stop trying to do anything. You know, like an Advaita Vedanta approach, if you're familiar with that, just stop trying to do anything. Every time you try to do something, you're getting away from presence. But in the Buddhist world, uh, that's not necessarily, we don't, that's often not the, the, the path of just radically saying that in, in the story. There's ways we can work with our experience. So with one of my teachers, Namkai Norbu, who's a so, it's like so, so Jin teacher, he started with presence and say, enter into presence. Every practice was like, just go to presence. Then you find that at a certain point, that's no longer a conscious part of your, you're not consciously present. Somehow a, attention, awareness collapses, distraction arises. And however that happens, that can indicate to us what we need to work with. What do we need to practice with in order to make uh, presence, the experience of presence more 
stable, more consistent, natural. And so uh, we're going to be exploring that through the, the practices of embodiment, awareness, and inquiry. And there's so much we're going to, we, we can talk about with that. I'm going to talk a little bit about embodiment, how this relates to presence here in just a second. But before I get to that, um, I want to talk about uh, what are the results of presence and practicing in presence? What might we notice in experience? First of all, there is, in my experience, there's a layer of struggle that drops in our in experience because the more that we let go, the more we realize, well, nothing I'm going to do is going to to create presence. Well, I can just let go and just let be and just be here in, in this experience. It doesn't mean that that all suffering goes away. And the there's this well known phrase, and I don't really know who is like the original person who said this. I looked online and I saw different people quoted, but uh, suffering is pl pain plus resistance. So this extra layer of resistance can soften and relax. Still, we can have painful experiences arise in presence, but we are present with that. And in this presence, we can be more responsive to what is happening, to what we're noticing, to what we're experiencing. Presence and responsive, responsiveness goes together. Now, it can be the case that when we have this taste of just being, of letting go deeply, well, you know, we can have a little bit of attachment to say, I just want, to, I just want the beingness, you know, I don't want to deal with reality, you know, I want to deal with all the messiness of, of life. And there might be, we might discuss this in this training, but there's a little sort of map that one of my mentors shared with me, Hokai Sobel, of phases of sort of being in presence. And one of those phases is no estrangement. That's how that, that phase is called. And that means that even after we have this experience of deeply relaxing, like completely letting go and just being present, we work with not being estranged from the world of what's going on. And we can notice in our experience the resistance to that. So we can say, oh, I can see my resistance to wanting to be part of the world, to respond to the world, to be with the change and the evolving nature of, of reality. But of course, when we first practice presence, it might be that we emphasize a little bit just letting go inside a formal practice that we're just going to let go of dealing with anything in, in our experience, just being with that sense of being here. Now, with embodiment, that's what we're going to start with today. I really love embodiment because there is something very, at first it's, I don't know, a lot of us can, including myself, can, I was very allergic to embodiment. I, I came to it very late <laughs> in my practice and path. Um, but there's a lot of reasons why we might not feel so jazzed about doing embodiment. Um, but there is something very direct about it in the sense that if as meditators we're very much in our head and if in our daily life we're very much in our mind and planning and thinking and evaluating getting into the body cuts through that in a certain way it helps us to relax the this uh constant distinctions that we're making uh, the 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 habit to do that unconsciously now uh when we're getting into the body we are trying to get a sense of wholeness of spaciousness and stillness in the body something that permeates and un permeates all of the change that our body experiences whether our body is in pain whether our body's feeling good our bodies change continually throughout our whole life but we can experience being present in our body as our body now how what are some of the ways that we're in our body or ways that we work with our body typically? Well, one way is the body scan. We're going to be doing something different, but let's imagine that we're in our heads here and there's often a sense of that there's somebody behind somewhere in there pulling levers. There's a director of some sort of guiding everything. And there's some binoculars and we look down at our body like this. There it is. 
So that, that is a movement towards including the body, but not necessarily in the body. So if we're constantly up here and looking out in the world, yeah, we're not, we may or may not be in our body. So if we take this approach and we scan down, yes, we are looking at the body, but not in the body. We can also surf the, 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 the surface of our body where we're not in the body, but we're, we're just sort of outlining the contours of it. We're not yet at home in the body. So that's something we can notice too. Am I just scanning the top of my body or am I getting into the internal depth, the internal space of my body? When we start working with embodiment, we will start noticing ways in which we do not feel present in our body habitually and the flavors in which that arises. So it may be tension or contraction. It may be heaviness or dullness. It may be feeling totally not, in, like we don't even have a sense of that part of our body. Like, oh, I feel really present in my stomach, but my chest feels really tight and tense or... Um, I, I maybe you go out of your head a little bit like you float like your head always feels like it's floating a little bit all these flavors can arise uh, as patterns in our body so that's part of the practice too and so the more that we work with these patterns the more that we feel present in our body the more we are just present <laughs> it just things start to to thaw out like ice melting these uh, contractions these uh collapsing in, in presence. Uh, when we have the experience of being present in the body as the body, even if it's for a moment, even if it's part of our body, for me, I always represent this, this shift like going from here to here. If, if, I, if I am my hand, then what else do I need to do? There's no more project for me to do. I'm just my hand. If I'm in my body and I am my body, there's nothing left to do. And it's really kind of funny sometimes, I think, because it's like we have a big project in meditation uh, around, say, presence. There's always, a, it's always kicking the can down the street, you know, and there's a, a goal later in the future. But once we're just present, it's just, oh, can be a relief, nothing left to do. So, these kind of experiences can arise. It can be momentary. It can last longer. And in practice, we're just continually working with uh, our experience, however we are, however our condition is. We utilize practices to help make it uh, easier and more uh, consistent for us to, to just be present. And by being present, to be responsive. So that's all I have to say for today. Hopefully that's given enough uh, to spark something in our practice together. <laughs>